thing on? Shit, it is. What up, guys? Welcome to episode two of the vlog. You care? You want me to get pocket aces? Yeah, you We're off to the casino. Let's do this. We are showered. We are ready to go to the casino. All right. Plan is today, we are gonna win some money. We're gonna bring about, I don't know, let's say 400 down there. We're gonna buy in for two, but if we go down even close past 150, we're adding on. Um, today is King of the Hill event. For anybody who doesn't know, never played one of those before, really what this event is about is the highest hand every hour is gonna get $400, $400 every hour. And then the highest hand of the day is the King of the Hill. That person gets $300 every hour that it stays unbeaten. So you get a straight flush in your first hour, no one gets a higher straight flush, you're getting $300 an hour from 2 to 10 o'clock tonight. Great payout, really fun event, a lot of people show up, a lot of money comes in, and hopefully a lot of players are going to want to give it to me. Yeah, so let's go. <laughs> Today, I wanted to thank everybody for the love on episode one. It was a great turnout. We got 40 videos, had to do a little re-uploading, so we were close to about 100 views on the last one. Appreciate that from everybody. Anyways, let's get right to it. Today, we are going to be making a chicken stir fry with cashews in it on a bed of rice. Seems like a very straightforward recipe to make, so let's jump right into it. Okay guys, first things first is the ingredients. What are we gonna be cooking with today? We have a lot of clean ingredients uh, to touch upon. Second, um, but basically we're gonna be working with chicken. Mine is marinated, you don't need to marinate it if you don't want to. Uh, this was just something that we had in the fridge, wanted to use it up. Feel free to do whatever you wanna do there. I am going with chicken breasts. You can also cook with thighs. I saw a variation of that. Personally, thighs are a little bit too fatty for me. Um, I think they're really hard to dress the meat itself, so I try to stay away from cooking with thighs. We also have cucumber, broccoli, carrot, rice, chicken broth, and mushrooms. Now, one of the things about this recipe is you really just need vegetables. You don't need exactly the vegetables that I'm going to be throwing in here, so no, no need to feel like you need these exact vegetables. Whatever is actually in your fridge is also perfect too if you just need to get it out of there. This recipe is great for cleaning out the fridge and getting something to feed the whole family. Have something before you head down to the card room. So, without any further ado, let's get all the ingredients prepped and ready according to the uh, list, and we'll recap that. Okay, guys, so while we're waiting for that to uh, cook, we're gonna look at the first hand that I had um, that was actually of note down at the casino when we got there. Okay. In this particular hand, we are on the button, and it's one, two game, no limit, nine people seated at the table right now. And we wake up with the king of hearts and the king of clubs, the second best hand in poker for all you Nimi fans out there. We have a profile on villain. Villain is taking forever with every single decision that he makes, and I've seen him come to showdown now twice with very raggedy hands for the ranges that I was putting him on pre-flop. So I really don't want to give him too much credit here. Uh, I think his ranges are a lot wider. I'm not really sure what he's going to be calling down with if he does make this call, but what ends up happening is everybody folds to him, and he makes it $7 to go. I am definitely not seeing a flop for $7 with pocket kings, so we 3-bet to 25. He is much deeper than I am at this point. We haven't been running that great, um, so we want to get at max value for the hand that we have now. Small blind and big blind fold, and per usual, this villain takes forever to make a decision. Grumbles, haws, and then he finally decides on a call, so we are going to a flop. Flop comes out for us pretty favorable, but also pretty draw heavy and scary. So, you know, if I'm going with a standard play here, I am thinking about his range. What could he possibly be calling a three bet with that doesn't include an ace, a uh, high pocket pair, an ace king, maybe king, no, I don't even think king jack, but again, his, his range is very wide from what I've seen. However, we're definitely not gonna allow him to see any cards. So, 
When the flop comes out, 10 of diamonds, ace of diamonds, king of spades, uh, we're feeling great, but we also definitely wanna pr uh, put a bet out there for some value and protection at this point. He could have diamonds. Um, but I just think hitting this board, he has an ace here. So he should be calling a lot of the bets. Um, so at this point, we do put in a bet. He ends up actually checking it over to me. And I think for a little bit, and I want to keep him in, but I want to keep his aces in. So I go for a half pot bet here. And I go ahead and put it in a $30 bet. He thinks about it for a little while, groans, and then ends up letting it go. Um, so it really wasn't the greatest hand that we could have had with Kings, but... We scoop the pot, um, and yeah, we're gonna take that one down. Okay guys, couple things about the ingredients. First thing, a half a cup of zucchini is roughly gonna be a half of a zucchini itself. All you need to do is slice those pretty thin. When we throw them into the uh, pan, they're gonna shrink down a little bit. Um, for the carrot, you can use a whole carrot. That's what I used in these shots when I was taking them. Um, the onion is about a half of an onion sliced up. And for the broccoli, it is about one thick stalk. And all you have to do to get those florets out there, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to buy them um, prepackaged, is just lay it down and cut the head. And, and as you go up closer and closer to the stalk, it'll start to break off into pieces. Also, the mushrooms, as you can see, I bought them um, pre-cut already. Makes it a lot easier. One package is eight ounces. That's all that's really um, this recipe calls for. The last piece is going to be your chicken. For this recipe, what you're really looking to do is just cut them into bite-sized pieces. So if you can see the uh, shot that I posted earlier, they should be pieces that are about a, uh, an inch or so thick. Uh, it should be quicker to cook. Okay, next up what we're gonna be doing is making the sauce. This is super easy. All you really need to do is take all of the ingredients that are listed in the sauce recipe, throw them into a bowl, and mix it up and set it off to the side. So let's get to it. Now the sauce is made, what we want to do is we want to brown the chicken. Grab your biggest saucepan that you have, a wok would be even better, but what you want to do is put one tablespoon of olive oil in there and then brown the chicken. So if you don't have a wok, by the way, or a big pan, what I'll do is I think I have a couple online. I'll throw a link down below. So let's get started. So while the vegetables are cooking, let's take a look at one more hand that we had down. In this particular hand, we are dealt five, six of position two. Um, this table, uh, I didn't really speak about that in the last video. I'm playing with four OMCs at this point. Um, we're just seeing a lot of limped pots. So for this particular game, I'm only going in with my low pockets in most situations, unless I'm on the button, um, I'm limping those hands. I'm also limping low and su low suited connectors. Uh, it is high hand day, so if I hit that straight flush, that is a little bit of incentive to call here, but I almost know that I'm not gonna be facing a raise, and if I do, I can pretty much put them on a range of hands uh, that are gonna be there. So for this particular hand, I do have semi good position on these players, but I wanna make a call here so I just elect to limp it uh, with my five, six of diamonds. We end up going four ways to a flop. The button folds, the small blind folds, and the big blind checks. So pretty standard for this particular table. Our flop comes out 
pretty decent. Um, ten of diamonds, eight of diamonds, seven of spades. So we we do have a flush draw at this point. We do have an open-ended straight draw. So we're not going anywhere, um, especially when we see that the big blind checks, the under the gun checks, and the villain from the pocket king's hand decides to make it six dollars after, of course, a long thought process behind it. God knows what he's doing. Um, I elect to call. Uh, he is going two-thirds bet here, but I really don't see small blind folds, big blind folds, and it's now me and this particular player heads up. The turn card comes out pretty decent at this point, where we see the four of hearts. So we, a villain checks it over to me, and I decide to go for about a half pot bet at this point. So we make it $11 to go. And of course, it takes another three minutes for him to decide to make a call, and he goes ahead and he calls. So we have a $43 pot, we're going into the river, and it comes the queen of hearts. So the flushes do not get there. If he had diamonds in his range, he missed. Uh, his only chance of stealing this pot here is to make a decent stab at it. Um, I really don't think if he had, you know, jack nine in this case, he would have been that a lot harder. I really don't think he would have been checking the turn there and then only calling. It would have been a raise. Um, so I'm re I feel really good about my hand at this point. There's nothing here that I really think he has. I don't even think sets are in his range. I think we're looking at a 10 with a decent kicker at best. So he goes ahead and he makes it $25, um, which seems very seems like a steal honestly um but we are at this point we only have 100 down uh 71 dollars behind us and i'm going for max value so i'm hoping that by making a jam here that it can look like i missed too um and that he'll fall and then he'll make the call but that does not end up happening he hums and he haws and he just lets it go so we are going to go ahead and we're going to scoop that pot and yeah so now let's get back to that recipe Okay, cool. So we are leaving the casino. We just logged about five-ish uh, hours, five and a half hours or so. Um, really nothing to report. There was a couple hands. We were in for 400. Uh, we were down at our lowest point to about $80 um, and ended with $253. So we're looking at about $140 loss today. Um, which honestly, all things considered, really isn't that bad. The first hundred went in the first hour and it was just basically pre-flop raise, completely whiffed the flop, C-bet, bold to another raise. It was just, it was just gross. Um, best hand all day was pocket kings. Somebody actually just hit a royal flush, so basically high hand is gonna be paying that guy for the rest of the day. And we're going to movies tonight, so yeah, we're heading out, but overall, not a really fun session, just card dead forever. It really wasn't that good. Thanks for joining us this week, guys. And that is gonna wrap up our second vlog episode. We made a great recipe today. Hope you guys all enjoy it. Thanks for joining me, I really appreciate it. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, subscribe to the alerts, all that jazz. Follow us on The Grinders Cookbook. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good